Welcome to Burlesque Custom Guitars. Guitars have been my passion for my entire life. Handcrafted by my hands to be played by yours. Each one I create is like no other. My name is James. Come along with me on this musical journey. So let's start off with electric guitars. Here we have a Stratocaster 2006. Um, it's got a few modifications I've done to it, but nothing that would make it not a standard guitar or the points that I'm going to give you to check it over. Uh, so again, everything I've said applies to this as far as fretware, um, neck, back bowing, etc., the nut, all of that stuff. But some of the things I find and a lot of people don't understand is how to check the pickups. So what I'm going to do is show you how to test each pickup individually and make sure your electronics are working okay. And I'm going to do that on all these guitars with the different switches. But this is just a quick way for you to be able to do it while you're sitting there or checking it out. Now hopefully you can plug this in when you're going to check it out. And one thing I want to tell you too, don't be afraid to take one of these with you. If somebody's selling something like a Gibson Les Paul or something like that, take the back plate cover off, check out the pots, make sure they're stamped Gibson or make sure it's got the PC board in there because unfortunately there are a lot of forgeries on the market and unfortunately there's people that will try to sell guitars that are not really what they are. Uh, so don't be afraid to take one of these. It shows you know what you're looking for and it shows that you know about guitars. So this also will help you check out the pickups and I'm going to show you how to do that. This is one of the coolest things you can do and, and it's a good little trick and it's a good way for you to also check stuff on, of your own at home. Uh, I just call it the tap test and, and you may not know about this but anything that's metal will work and it'll tell you if your switch is working and it'll tell you if your pickups are individually working. Also a lot of people don't know how this works so I'm going to explain it as well, the five way switch, what it's supposed to do. So in this position, this is the humbucker or the bridge position and we've got two uh, sets of taps we want to check here. We want to check here and we want to check here. Now this pickup is a blues bucker pickup so it's got this is actually a slug coil so it's not normally as loud as the other one so if you've got a regular humbucker in here it should be as loud as this one this is a slug so you're going to get a lighter sound but it should be as loud on a regular humbucker see it's a it's not as it's loud it should be this loud on both sides okay now if you go into position four which is this way you want, this is going to be, both of these pickups are going to be on. A lot of people don't understand what happens, but when you go with two pickups, the weaker pickup is going to be the dominant pickup. I know you, it's hard to believe, but it's Ohm's law. Technically, the weaker signal is going to be the more dominant. And it's, it's, it's kind of going to maybe throw you off a little bit, but always think, if this is a higher output pickup, and then this, this one's going to give you the most tone. This pickup's still going to work, but this is going to be the most uh, in influential on the sound. So, again, we're in position four, should be these two pickups. So I'm going to tap test, that's on, pardon me, that's on, so I know that's working, okay? And if you want to be smart about it, you want to come up here too. Give this one a check, because there's been a lot of times where guys have brought me guitars 
and I've swept through here and all of their pickups are on the whole time and they can't tell. So we're in position for, do yourself a favor, go boom, 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 boom. You shouldn't hear anything on this pickup. Now we're going to the middle position, okay? So that means it's just this guy. Again, if you want to check, make sure the wiring's correct. Now notice you can slightly hear that. That doesn't mean the pickup's on. It's just because it's in the vicinity. That's how strong the magnetic field technically is. Uh, but this pickup is not on. But now, listen to how loud this pickup is. Let's go back to position four. Sorry. This one's real. It is louder. But again, let's go back up here. Nothing. In the middle position should be just this. Not here. And not here. Now we're going to go to position two. Which means both of these are on. Uh, in this case, on most strats, depending upon the strat, you will lose the hum noise. Depends on the pickups though. If it's, a, if it's an older style or a reissue, the, the middle pickup isn't going to be reverse wound. So you're not going to get the hum cancelling feature. Uh, if you notice that it's humming in this position, it's probably because this pickup isn't reverse wound. So, I know they're working. Okay? Let's do another, let's just make sure. We're not getting anything there. We got it there. We got it there. Now this should be just the front pickup. See? Within vicinity so you can hear me tapping. Isn't that crazy? But that's what that's on. So you know that's on. So you know that's working properly and you're working through. I'm not gonna get into the SRS switching with you because it's you would literally have to have the manual on there. Most strats don't have it. If it does, ask the person you're selling it or buying it from, pardon me, if they have the manual so you can test it. Um, and I don't want to bore you with that because it's it's not in regards to all strats. It's like one out of a hundred you're gonna find has SRS switching. So now we're going to check for tone, okay? Uh, in most cases, you will find that the tone controls on most strats, this will be your neck and this will be your middle. The bridge sometimes does not have a tone control, which I think is a shame. So I usually wire my tone controls so that this is here and it works for these two and this is for this. So. In my case, my tone control is going to work on this and on this, okay? Sorry. So in the middle position, now when I go to the front, so I know that's working proper. And in these two positions, this will work and this will work for both pickups you'll find, which is kind of cool. Um, however, if you if you find that you know it's not on the bridge, don't take that in, you don't, you know, don't think that your wiring's messed up because most standard stratocasters, this tone is for the neck and this tone is for the the middle. You can rewire it, so don't think you can't. It's just a matter of taking it into your tech and, and getting him to look at it and switch some stuff around. Okay. Um, next thing we want to check. Is your input jack usually that's just give it a good wiggle and if you hear any noises crackles or pops you know you got an input jack that's kind of screwed up that technically is how you can check over any strat for electronics um, again fretware and stuff I'm going to put some pictures up for you to look at so you can refer to what normal fretware look what normal frets look like and what frets that are kind of beat up look like come on over here and I'll show you these frets are kind of nice and clean they may have a pit here or two in there. Like there's one right there. Sorry, I'll get my finger out of the way. See it right there? So, see how that string's hiding it? It's not bad. Like, I mean, that's not terrible. But if you, if you look underneath and this whole area is pitted in all these comfort zones, that means you're gonna need to get a fret dress done. So, point that out to the seller. That's my advice, Danny. So we're going to move on now to Les Paul style guitars or dual humbucking guitars.
So here we have an example of a Les Paul style guitar, which means it's got two humbuckers in it and a three-way switch. Uh, Les Pauls usually will have two volume and two tone controls, one for each setup, but I'm just showing you this so you can kind of do the same tests on Les Paul with a three-way switch, which would probably be here. And also the advantage is also to show you what to look for on a Floyd Rose. So I'm kind of killing two birds with one stone here. This guitar has not been set up yet. It's been brought in to me with a big wish list and I'm about to take care of that. But I want to show you really quick just what to check. Make sure your three-way switches are working and stuff on a Les Paul as well. This has EMGs in it, which are active pickups. They're running with batteries, which you will see right there is a spot for a nine volt battery. Um, yeah, we'll get into the Floyd Rose in a second. Um, but same thing, we got it on the bridge position. We got a volume and we got a tone here. We're gonna tap test, make sure that's working. That should not be on, which is, that means it's good. You can test your tone as well. Working really good. Middle position should be both of these pickups on. Great. Your tone should work within the two as well. So everything's working cool. Front position, just the neck. Again, let's test, make sure nothing's coming through. Beauty. All right, um, Les Paul guitars. What to look for on Les Paul guitars? Like I said, in my case, if I was looking at a Les Paul now, I would take one of these with me because what I would want to do is I would want to take these control covers off and take a look at the pots inside and see if they're stamped Gibson or see if they're stamped, uh, pardon me, not stamped, but if there's the new PC board that they put in there. Uh, those are things to look for. If you open up a guitar that says Gibson on the headstock and you open it up and you see Epiphone pots, which is what I see a lot, that means that it is a knockoff and it is a fake. And it'll literally have red and blue Epiphone style wiring in it and it'll have Epiphone pots in it. So be aware of that. If somebody tries to tell you that they were stock and that's how it came, that's not true. That means that that guitar is offshore and it's fraudulent. It may have a proper serial number, maybe stamped on the back and said made, made in the USA, but if it's got Epiphone pots and an Epiphone wiring harness in there, I've seen hundreds of them like that and they're not real. Another way to check for fakes is check the binding out on them. Look around and this is, I'm sorry, like I wish I had a last Paul to show you, but you know, check the binding on the neck, make sure it's all nice and straight. Check in places like here and then all the curves on a Les Paul. If you see any kind of binding that's mismatched or it's got paint on it or anything like that, there's no way they'd let that out of the Gibson factory. So those are things that'll be a dead giveaway um, is binding, um, again, electronics. So please take a screwdriver with you. And if the person that's selling it to you says, no, 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 don't touch it, walk away. Um, you're going to see uh, fretware as well, Les Pauls. Very flat radius necks. Check to make sure it's not back bowed. Check the nut to make sure that they haven't messed around with it and you're not getting fret buzz. Again, do all the same tests that we're doing with the acoustics and the electrics on your same guitar because it's all relevant, whether it's an acoustic or electric. This applies to everyone. Um, and these are things to look for. A lot of Les Pauls have ebony fretboards on them. This has an ebony fretboard on it, which very luckily does not have any cracks in it. And there are things that you don't see when you're buying a guitar because sometimes the strings will hide them. That's another thing you want to look for. Ebony, if it dries out, it will crack literally right underneath the truss rod because the truss rod is pushing up against the fretboard and you'll get a slot. You can fix that. It's not a huge deal, but again, things to look for. Um, things to look for on the side binding as well. If you see cracks and such beside the binding. That means that this neck is shrunk and that binding has cracked. Um, again, just upkeep and maintenance of the neck. Fretboards need to be treated constantly, especially here in Calgary. This can apply wherever you live. If you don't treat your fretboard, you're not doing yourself any favors, whether it's rosewood, ebony, pero, palfera, you know, grenadillo, whatever. Treat them, take care of them and they'll take care of you and you won't have as many problems with frets either because it works in hand in hand. If you, if you have a dried out fretboard, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have loose frets and 
that's you know there's there's many many things I could get into about that and it's very difficult to know uh, the only way to really know if you got loose frets is to literally put the guitar on the bench bevel the edges and do some work on it but these are things that you want to ask do they treat their fretboard um, you know if they've got service records see if you can see them they, you know most most reputable places will give you a proper invoice and show you the work I've had tons of customers bring me guitars and inside the case is all of the history of their their guitar work just like a car so take advantage of that and ask those questions as well to the person that's selling the guitar do you have any service records of the guitar it's a really good thing to see how well the guitar has been taken care of so I want to talk about Floyd Roses really quick and things to look for on a Floyd Rose the first thing I always look for is to see if there's any missing parts or anything is different or out of whack um, a lot of guys will replace the uh, lock nuts inside or pardon me the lock blocks inside and they can replace them with the incorrect ones so if you see anything that looks different in here or you see some guys will jam a little piece of paper in there or something um, just so it'll hold the string properly there's a sign there that the, that the Floyd's had some work done to it uh, Floyd's are usually pull back and dive bombs kind of thing as well so you know you can check for motion and see it's doing the thing um, again I'll always like to check to make sure that these haven't been stripped out your little fine tuners take them to the top and they should stop they should not come all the way out so if they do come all the way out you gotta ask yourself what's going on here somebody's either forced that thing out or it's stripped so that's things to look for okay um, again we've got these hold your little posts in make sure that these are working I always like to just give them a little push make sure everything's moving properly because sometimes someone will some some people will, will replace them and they'll be stuck in here I've seen people put a, lar a larger uh, post in there and it'll literally get stuck so if you go to tune it it's not going to move at all so little things to look out for on a Floyd Rose flip it over and you will see that this at one point had a trim stop in it um, it's also missing the lockdown plate for the uh, springs so there's another thing I would ask where's the lockdown plate for this um, again look for you know good springs in it make sure it's got the right spring claw um, if it's like this personally I would say hey have you got the original parts in the original spring claw so I can put that back in um, because without the trim stop this is kind of a, a weird setup uh, could be a little bit off balance um, and again the uh, arm and the uh, socket that the arm goes into I don't have the bar for this one sorry but just make sure that this is tight and it's not moving around and look in the back and you'll see there's a little allen key that locks everything down there just make sure everything's in there because sometimes you'll find some people will mishmash stuff and you know put different uh, nuts and bolts where they should be and you, and you don't want to have to go through the hassle of having to get that fixed so just things to look for also make sure that the posts are set in nicely and that's usually when you pull back you can actually what I like to do I'll grab each side and literally lift because sometimes these will slide out it happens a lot be, you'd be surprised then that's usually from guys doing pullbacks and getting rough with it having you know too much fun as they say so just check for that and uh, you should be cool. Floyd roses, or you know, designed by Floyd's, are pretty, pretty standard. They're all pretty much the same. Uh, it's all based on quality of components and hardware, of course, as we know. That's how the guitar world is. But they all should work similarly. And if it's set up properly and locked down properly, you shouldn't have any problems. Just like I said, little things to look for. <laughs> Archer theme. Okay, bass guitars. This is a standard dusty <laughs> Epiphone Viola that belongs to moi. Um, and it's a very simple guitar, but in most cases, uh, for example, the Precision and the Jazz Fender, um, and most basses are pretty straightforward. I'm going to show you another one after that's got a preamp and all that kind of stuff in it, but I'm going to show you how they work and what to listen for and again, what to test. Um, so here we have a short scale viola bass with two little mini humbuckers in it 
and it's got two volume controls and a tone control, adjustable saddle, and uh, just a nice clean little bass that, that's pretty cool, very common, a lot of people use it. And um, the way to test it out, I would say, here we start, let's start off with the electronics, crank everything up. And how these work, a lot of basses do not have switches, so a lot of people are wondering, like, what's going on, how's, how's, how do they switch in between the two pickups? Well, you're actually just, the volume controls control each pickup, and they're going straight to the output jack. And then the tone control is a master tone control for both of them. So these basically have their own single individual uh, volume control and then a master tone control. On, on uh, Fender precision basses and jazz basses, they have, uh, some have a, the, two, the split single and then they'll have the two single coils. Uh, when both volumes are turned up, you'll notice that the, the hum goes away. That's because the single coils are now becoming one and becoming a hum canceling, hum bucking pickup, so to speak. But this has mini humbuckers in it, so you'll notice there's no hum, right? No 60 cycle hum. So I'm going to just test, I believe this is the bridge pickup, and I'm going to use my trusty little screwdriver that I didn't forget to bring with me on my guitar buying mission. And I know that's working. And we'll test the tone as well. Oh, pardon me, I'm testing the volume. <laughs> working. That's from lack of use. I'm no bass player. Now let's turn that off and let's go to the back pickup. This will, this applies to any pick a, a guitar that's set up the same way. Uh, jazz would be set up this way so you can do the same tests. If it's just got a single volume control, same thing. Just do the top test, make sure the tone control is working. Sorry, I gotta be on the pickup to do it. So I know that's working. And I know my tone control is working through that as well. So, we're done. As far as the electronics, really get tested. And then the input jacks down here, give it a wiggle, make sure you're not squeaking or squealing or popping or cutting in and out. Uh, another thing I would check if I was buying this particular kind of guitar, I'd make, oh, sorry. I would make sure that uh, everything's nice and tight and been taken care of, no parts are missing. A lot of times I'll see um, guys will take this out or they'll They'll show up and they won't have this and ask me if I have an extra pin because guys have changed out their strap locks on it. So make sure all your parts are there. And uh, the saddle as well. This is all made out of wood so you can check to make sure there's no cracks. This is actually slotted so that they can put these in for intonation and such. But you know, just check it out. Make sure it's not busted and cracked or split anywhere. Again, you know. Give it a good physical look over. This guitar is chambered a little bit, but nothing really crazy to look for. Fret wear on a bass is different than on a guitar. I'm um, hoping I got some fret wear on here to show you because it looks a little different. Okay, you can kind of see it here. It's very, very minimal. But you can see where the strings hit the frets. On a bass guitar, they flatten out. And in, in some cases, you'll see lines starting to develop, which are literally the grooves of the guitar string. You'll see little lines. And because the string's vibrating, right, on a, on a bass more, and more fret contact, uh, per se, with the vibration. So you'll see little grooves side to side. And we'll put some pictures up of that as well. So you can see what I'm talking about. If you see a lot of that, that means the frets are going to need to be done. So I'm going to give you some examples of pictures of what I would consider guitar frets that need to be done. Another thing I haven't really, really come or talked about either is fret height. I personally, um, I always like to check out the fret height, make sure there's a lot of meat there, and make sure and and you know questions. You got to ask these questions: if the fret's been dressed, how many times have the frets been dressed? Because on most guitars, you can get about five to six fret dresses out of a set of frets, and then you gotta do a refret. So keep that into consideration. If Buddy says that I've dressed him four times, then you gotta go, okay, well, I'm getting, these must be getting pretty low, or whatever, and the guitar may feel great, etc., etc. Must be playing like a dream, right? Because they got such low frets, but you gotta keep in consideration that you're gonna probably have to do a refret or buy another neck, because the costs of doing either is, are not too far off, so.
anyway, um, look for the sizzle lines, I like to call them. They're, that's, it's not pitting, they're called sizzle lines from now on, so use that term. Are there sizzle lines on your base? <laughs> Here we have a five string base with a preamp built in, and I'm gonna go over it really quick. So everything applies to this base that literally applied to that. It's the same kind of setup. Um, I actually marked these for the client so he could figure out what was going on because he was a little bit confused. Uh, this is a master, this is a bass and treble control, and this is a balance for in between the two pickups. Now this guitar I also have put in a kill switch for him so that when he goes live he can turn it on and off. And he plays live a lot so he can just flick the switch and he's got no tone. So you got a master switch here. Now. This is the balance between the two. So this is kind of like a volume control as well. So it's a volume control for in between the two. So if I put it all the way front, it just should be this pickup. We can test that again. Oh, pardon me. Other way around, sorry. Um, all the way forward should be this way. Now if I go to the middle, it should be both. If I go to the back, it should be just this. So it's working, okay? Center, balanced. Now, if these are noise, no, pardon me, if these are regular single coils, you're gonna have hum, like that 60 cycle hum you would get on a Strat or what have you. If you were just on the single coils in center position, you would not. But because these are noise canceling and also on a preamp, they're a little bit different. Uh, we have a bass control. So it just gives you more bottom end, which sound like they need to be cleaned again. And then we have a treble. Some will have bass, mid, and treble. So you might see the same kind of configuration with three. So that's things to look for, make sure they're working. If they're scratching and what have you, as long as they're working, it should be okay. If they're cutting in and out, it's usually a sign that they need to be replaced. But if they're just scratchy, that just means they need a good cleaning. Again, fretware you wanna look for on these guys. Here we have an ebony fretboard. So let's look for cracking and stuff. And we always wanna look in the center of the fretboard to see if there's cracking because that's where the truss rod is. And that's what's usually pressing right up against the fretboard and going to make it crack. But not Jim's bass because he brings it to burlesque guitars and gets it taken care of all the time. <laughs> anyway, I hope this helped. I really do. Um, if I have missed anything or if there was anything you wanted to talk about, like, you know, your guitar or some problems, just send me a text or a message on the, on the page. Please don't forget to support local and hand-built guitars all over the world and thank you so much for watching don't forget to hit like and subscribe too it really means a lot to us the more subscribers we get you know the better it is and the more questions and stuff we'll be able to answer so hope you enjoyed it again if you have any questions send them on the way and again from burlesque guitars thank you so much